Hello! So today I have the puzzle Four Leaf by Bremster, and this is part of an exchange between the four Sudoku solvers on YouTube, that's our collective name, which is specifically myself, Bremster, Zetamath, and Scott Strosall. And the last exchange, I did a puzzle by Zetamath, which was called Antimatter and was extremely difficult, took me a long time. And then Bremster did a puzzle by me. And so now we've reversed the direction. So I got my revenge on Zetamath. He and his husband Tristan uh, solved uh, my puzzle, Whisper Something. You can check that out on his channel. And I'm going to be solving a puzzle by Bremster. So check out the, the three other channels if you haven't heard of them before. Definitely worth subscribing to. And also we have a shared Discord server if you want to join our Discord server. I also have a Patreon if you want to join that. Uh, support me on a monthly basis. That really, really helps me out uh, when people show their support in that way. And other than that, I think I'm just going to dive right into this puzzle. So again, this is called Four Leaf. It's by Bremster. We have normal Sudoku rules. So every row, column, and box must have the digits 1 to 9 exactly once. Additionally, um, we have German whisper lines. So these are standard German whisper lines, but if you don't know what those are, the way these work is as you move along the line, adjacent digits have to have a difference of at least five. So what that means is, say I put a six here. Well, there's only one number between one and nine, which are the Sudoku digits, that has a difference of at least five from six. So this would have to be a one. Now from here, though, there are actually four digits that have at least a difference of five from one, six, seven, eight, or nine. So I could do, say, an eight. And then here I'd have to subtract at least five, and then add at least five, subtract at least five, etc. as we move along the line. Additionally, we have these black dots on the grid. And the black dots have, the digits separated by the black dot have a one to two ratio. Another way to put that is one digit is exactly twice the other digit. So if I put a two here, I need to put either a 1 here, which makes 2, double 1, or 4 here, which makes 4, double 2. Those are the only options. Not all the dots are given, so that means if I put a 2, 4 here, there could be a black dot between them, but there doesn't have to be. So I'm, I'm perfectly allowed to do that. Then we have these blue circles and red circles that are at the corners of cells. And what those mean is if you look at the four cells that are surrounding that circle, if the circle is blue, then that means that the digits, that there's exactly that number of low digits in those four cells. So here, this blue two means there's exactly two low digits within these four cells. And by low, we mean the digits one through four. So that means that the two other ones are five through nine. The red cells are the opposite. They tell you the number of high digits. So those are the digits six through nine. So so for this two, for example, I could do I could do two four across this black dot, and then this could be say a five, and this could be a nine, and that would all work out. We have two low digits, and then we have two not low digits. And then for this three here, um, I could put three high digits like nine, eight, seven, like that, or I could even repeat the nine if I wanted to. There's no non-repeat rule. And then and then I would put a non-low digit here like a two, and that would fulfill this three clue. So those are the rules. If you'd like to try the puzzle yourself, you can check the link in the description. And uh, I'm going to get started now. All right. Well, I seem to have broken the puzzle. So I and I tried to back up and figure out where I broke it, but I couldn't. So I've restarted the puzzle. And this is all you're going to see is my second attempt at the puzzle. So it's still a live solve, but it's a live solve with 30 to 40 minutes of uh, um, breaking it first. So I do know a little bit about the puzzle, but I don't know how much I can trust just because, uh, you know, I broke it. And I don't know how early I broke it, but I think it was pretty early. So I'm going to give this another attempt. Uh, the thing that I want to explain about German Whispers lines real quick is that you can't put a 5 on them. So if you put a 5 on them, you'd have to put a 0 or a 10 next to it, and that's just not going to work. And so no fives ever go on a German Whispers line, which means they're either low or high, using the same definition as these dots. And in addition to that, they always switch between low and high. If this, if this cell were low, which I'll use blue to represent, then the one next to it would have to be high, because you'd be adding five. And then the cell after that would have to be low, because the only thing you could do is subtract five or more. And so you'd end up parity coloring it like that. And so that's going to be really important, for example, here. 
because uh, once you get one cell, you can now figure out the rest of them. And this zero here is telling us there are no high digits in this in these four cells. There's no high digits. What can this be? It can't be a five because it's on a German whispers line. So it is low. So with that low, that puts lows on all of these digits and highs on these two. In addition to that, we can mark these as low or five because five is also not high. So five wouldn't break the zero clue. And I'm going to use gray to represent where five might be. And so next we can just look at this three. We can see, oh, well, we have our high here already. We need three lows. Five is not low. So um, these are all low. And now this, this we marked low, so we can mark the, every other as low and every other as high. We get that parity immediately. This three does the same exact thing. These three have to be low, and we can parity color this immediately. All right, so now these black dots that have two lows on them, we could we could mark these as excuse me, we could mark these as one, two, three, four, but three is not possible because the three would need a six, and obviously they can't be from six. So these are actually from one, two, four, and they must contain a two because one four is not a one to two ratio. All right, so this is really good progress to start, but it's just we're just getting started. A lot of these quads give us a lot of good stuff. This three here says we need three highs. They only have one, so these two have to be high. It can't be five, because we need three highs. Um, this three here, we also need three highs, so these are all high. We get only one low here, and the low is going to be on this line in one of these two. So because we know the low is in one of these two, this cell here can't be five, can't be low, so it must be high. And so this is from six, seven, eight, nine, but we can't be seven or nine because uh, black dot a seven or a nine and actually a five as well. Um, you can't divide them by two because they're odd. And, you, and if you multiply them by two, you get 10 or higher. So this is down to six or eight. You can divide these by two only. Six over two is three, eight over two is four. This is three or four, that's low. And so now we can color the rest of this low. And these are high. So next we can Consider this grouping of cells here. We know where the high is, it's here. These can't be high, so they need to be low or five. So we can mark that with blue or gray. Um, additionally here, we already have our one blue. So can, these can't both be high. We already have three highs in the row. So we definitely have a five among these and also a high. Um, so that's f the high in gray. And then this one is the last low. Because the 5 is among these two, it can't be here, so this is also low. Now, whenever I get these cells in the middle of Dern Whispers lines, they can't be 4, because they'd have to be surrounded both by 9. 9 is the only thing that could go with 4. So I can mark these as 1, 2, 3. This is 1, 2, 3. Um, this one, you have to be careful. This could be 4, because it can be surrounded by double 9. Um, but this is 1, 2, 3, because double 9 is in the same box. And there may be more, but I'm not seeing it. And it's the same with the orange cells. They cannot be six because they'd have to be surrounded by ones. So that's from seven, eight, nine. Uh, Got to be careful here. That's from seven, eight, nine. These could be six surrounded by double one. So let's see what else can we do. Um, I wonder if we can pair decolor this one. So we only get one low in here. It's definitely among these two. So this is higher five. Can we do more with that? If these were both low, that would be all the lows for the box. But that seems okay. I have four lows in here, so this one's definitely low. Sorry, definitely high, I mean. Um, because I can't get more lows, and this can't be five. So this is also a six, eight with a three, four. These three fours have to be with a uh, eight or nine because uh, Three is too high to go with a seven or lower. This is definitely either high or five. So are these high or five? So we have this one here as well. We know the high is going to be one of these two. So these are definitely lower five. And I mostly mark it like this so I know it's not high, which does still help, but it's it makes it a little bit harder to scan. So that might be why I already broke the puzzle once. Uh, but I'm continuing to use the same strategy anyway. Uh, we have our one low here. So these are high or five. 
Um, now I wonder if we have a sort of a symmetric thing going on here where five must be in here. Um, that would mean that so if these were if these weren't five, that would mean all of these are lower five. Um, but that's not possible. So because this needs two highs in it, and only one of them is going to come from this whisper line. So the other one's up here. So that would be five highs in the row. So there's definitely a five among these and a uh, high. So that five sees over, meaning this one cannot be five. And so because five can't be on this two, we know there's going to be a low and a high here and a low and a high here. But I don't think we can figure out exactly which one's where yet. Let's let's review our quads. Ah, yes. Immediately when I review my quads, I see that this one has to be high, and that's huge because these uh, we now have four definite highs in this column that places this five, which means these are both definitely high. Sorry, it's gray. Almost freaked out about breaking it again. That means this one's definitely high. C's a five. Um, so we have three and three. So there's a low and a high here. Okay. So these can't both be high because that would be five highs. So there's a low up here, which means we now have four lows among here. That places this five here, because it can no longer be low. Um, does that help? Yes, that means that that places this five here. And this is no longer five, it's high. That quad's fulfilled. I was looking at my quads and already got something fruitful. So let's see. That quad's done. This quad's basically done. This quad's basically done. This quad's basically done. It's gonna the whisper line will fulfill it. Um, this line's this one's done. This one needs two lows. So one of these will be low, and that'll finish the lows for the row. So we'll have a low here and three lows here, which means that there's no more lows. Does that force this to be high? Yes, it does. So if this one were low, then now I have all four lows for the row. So both of these would be high, and now this quad would be broken. So that means this one must be high. We can propagate that. We can do these lows. So we have four lows here. Um, we need fives and highs for the rest of... This one can't be five, so that's high. That places this five. It's very good. Um, this one has to be high to finish the box. Now hopefully we're, we're doing well here. Um, this one sees a 5, so it's definitely high. This one then is low. This is another one of those 1, 2, 4s with a 2 definitely on it. All right. I need to be careful because this is looking similar to my last solve. Um, what can I do now? This is also one, two, four with a two on it. We have four highs here. So these are low or five. This one's definitely low. Let's do our definites without trying to introduce more five fuzziness for now. So that's definitely low. There's a five in this box. We have our four highs. These are low. Um, this can't be five. So it's definitely low or high. Looks like it could be either at the moment. This one does not see a 5. Okay, maybe there's somewhere else to look. One of these is 5. Can I tell which? I don't know, but it'll be higher 5. Yeah, I have all my lows for this box. So this one's high, for sure. That's my two highs for here. This one has to be low. Yeah, this is all working out. Um, this wasn't, oh, let's see. That's not really a good what if, is it? I need a low and, a, okay, yeah. This one sees a five now, or it has the whole time maybe. Um, so we have the four highs and it sees a five, so that one's low. That's all my lows, that places this five. Oh, I could have done it for the column as well. Good, um, at least it's all working out. This cell is um, one of those seven, eight, nine cells. This is a one, two, three cell. Uh, so there's a four among one of these two. And that's actually interesting. Okay, so let's go with this. So for the row, 
4 is in one of these two, which means these can't be 4. These are high, so they can't be 4. And so 4 is in one of these two cells. Well, if 4 is in one of these two cells, it's not here. We know 4 is not here or here because of the whisper lines. So that places this 4. That sees down, placing 3 and 6. Um, so these are from 7, 8, 9. And now the question is, where do these 3 and 6 go in this box? They can't go here. It shares a row. And these just aren't marked with 3 or 6 as possible. And so 3 and 6 both go up here. And I can't put them both here. So one of them's going to go on this black dot, which means both of them go on the black dot. So that's a 6. That's a 3. Um, just to be clear, because they have to, you know, 6 can only be with 3, and 3 can only be with 6 on a black dot. Um, what else does this do? The 6, 3 is looking here. So this has to be the 6. So this is a 7, 8, 9. This can't be a 2. It sees a lot of 2s. Uh, so 2 is actually here. It looks down. This is not a 2. This is a 1, 3. Um, this is a 1 or a 2. It sees the 4 and the 3. This is also a 1 or a 2. We have all our lows. So do any of these see a 5? This sees a 5, so that's a high. 5's um, in one of these two. Ah, there we go. Where does 5 go in this box? It has to go here. That places this as a high. We have all four of our highs. So we could mark this as low 5. So 5's in one of these two. So we, have, we definitely have a low here. And then, so that finishes our lows. That makes this a high. I guess I could have just done this box as well. At least that works out. I'm so paranoid of breaking this again. Um, this is a 7, 8, or 9. So are these. So are these. So is this one. And this one. This could be 6. We could put a double 1 here. Now, does it have to be 6? Pro uh, probably not. <laughs> um, let's see. 6 doesn't go here. So 6 is in one of these two. Can I color the rest of this? Well, this column's done, right? We have our lows, so this is high. Um, this column is almost done. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 lows. So this is high or 5. 5 is one of these. And this column, we're not quite as sure, are we? Well, this 5 looks over. So this is a low and a high for sure. And so where does 5 go? 5 goes in one of these three. I'm going to be super paranoid about where this goes because I, I think I broke it somewhere around here. Um, Can we do next that's actually safe so low and a high here don't know what order they go in how about this column though so i've got one two three four i have four lows so this one has to be high that means this one's low for the row yeah so i don't know quite how these fives work well, this could be low high or five still which is a bit frustrating, but I'm sure that's intentional. <laughs> Not intentional to be frustrating, but intentional to be uh, ambiguous at this point. Um, really clever setting, actually. If only I could get it uh, to not break this time. All right, one, two, and four. It's one, two, or three. That's a one, two, three triple, so that's a four. So these are from one, two, three. So there's definitely a four among these two, which I think I should have seen earlier. Yes, so these fours, they definitely look in. There is a four among these. That means this is a two, four pair. That puts a one here, two here. If this were a six, it would be double one. It would be another two, four pair. This is a one or a three. 
Okay, I've got a two and one of these two, because these twos look in. So this one's not a two. It's one, three, or four. That happens in every corner, actually, with the twos looking in. These are from one, two, and four. This is not a four. Can this be a four? Double nine? I don't see why not. Place the four, one, three, and two in this column. Okay, so these aren't twos. One, three pair does remove one from here. That's a two, four pair. So these are from one, three, and five. Whoops. On mode. One, three, and five. I wonder if these all end up two, four pairs. Um, these two fours look in, and that's actually fine because we have two and four here. So two and a four here. So if these were also two and four, we'd have the four here and a two here and a two here. That all seems to work. We'd also have to put two and four here, which seems to work. Ah, okay. Well, these can't these can't all be two fours. I'm not sure how much that helps, but if all of these were two four pairs. I'd have a two four pair across here. And that would force both two and four to be in this one cell, and that's not going to work. So one of these at least is a one two pair. Can I do anything with that? Well, this one sees over. This is actually a two or a four. I feel like there's something there. One of these is a one. So this is not a one. <laughs> The small deductions. This cell that can be literally anything is not a one now. It's not a two either. There, now I feel better. Um, it's not a four. So if this weren't the two four, the four would go here, which seems plausible. This is a one, two, or four. That's it. Okay. So where's three in this column? That has to go here. That's surrounded by an eight, nine. Places the seven. That's not a seven. There's a seven, one of these. So this is from eight, nine. That means this can't be a three because it would put too many eight, nines in the box. I need a six and one of these two. A six, double one, okay. Seems like it would be. No, it's not. This can't be a six. If it were a six, this would be double one, and now there's nowhere to put one in this. Oh, no, we could hide. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I eliminated one from here by discovering that. So this can't be a six, because we put double one here, and we know the one is somewhere up here, because it's not here and it's not high. So this can't be a six. This is seven, eight, or nine. And now for the row, that places this six. That sees up, placing this six. Six now has to go in this box somewhere. It's one of these two. Um, still have no idea what this is colored. What are we doing on sixes, though? That six. Six is one of these two. This could be a six. I would put a one here. This would be a one four pair. Seems reasonable. Um, what else is happening with sixes? Six has to go exactly here. These sixes look down. So six goes here. Six goes here. That sees up, placing this six. This is not a six. And now we know that this is the six, and it's high. That's, that's nice. Wow. <clears throat> I wonder if that was intended. Seems like it was. So this now... We now we have now have four solid highs. So this is the five. That makes that a five. So these should be gray, and this should be high. Not a five. This is definitely low. And I think I have all my sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think I already confirmed that, but just double checking. So now the rest of these are all seven, eight, nines for highs. Two here means this isn't a two. 
This can't be double one. So unless this is a nine, this is a one and this is a two. That seems to work out. This five looks down. I can place this five. Let's do the easy stuff, right? Before we try to do hard things again. Um, so this is a one, two, or four. This is a one or a three. It's for the column. These two are not seven, because we have the seven placed. So seven's in one of these two. Sevens go in one of these. Um, and this row, seven's in one of these two. So this can't be a seven. So this is from eight, nine. Seven's in one of these two. And one of these two. So if this were seven, this would be double one. That puts a one here. This would be two, four. So this would have to be one, two. I don't know if that's important. Um, it would put a one here. And here. And here. And that's broken. So can I do this more cleanly? If this is a seven, this is double one. So they can't be threes. That definitely puts a one here. Wait, is that broken? Yeah, it is. Okay. So if you remember, these two couldn't be two fours because it actually makes two four pairs across here. And now we'd have to put both two and four in this one cell. So we know these aren't both two fours. So one of them has to be a one two pair, at least one of them. Now, if this is a seven, then that forces this to be double one, because three can't be next to seven. This, du this double one looks over. And in fact, we could even we can even make this a little bit stronger. This can't be a one. If this is a one, that sees over. That places a one here. And now that this can't be a, a one, two, that makes this a one, two. And so if this is a one, two, this is a three, but this one puts a three here, and that clashes. So there may be an easier way to see that, but that means this is a three. This is a three, that's not seven. This is seven. That's seven. Whoops, meant to clear sevens there. Um, that makes that a seven. Uh, let's keep going. This is an eight or a nine. That makes this a seven, which means that's one and two. That's a three. Um, this two, eliminates a two from here, also sees up, eliminates that two, actually places this two here in the box, places that two, now we're, now we're making progress, that's a one, three, or four, this is also one, three, or four, do we know, this can't be a three, so that places this three, this is a one for pair now. Uh, don't stop here. Keep going. This three sees up. So that's a three. So that's not a seven. That places this seven. That's not a seven. Um, this seven's placed. And that seven's placed. So that can't be a four anymore. That's a one. This can't be a four either. That places... Yes, with the one, this is two, and this is four. Now this immediately we can make a one two pair that makes this three and one. Could have gotten that elsewhere. Um, this is a four, and it's not it's not breaking yet. I am I am very hopeful. All right, that's not a four. That's a one. Two four pair puts a one and a two here. This four sees over. That's two four and two. That's a four. That's two and four. Um, oh, I didn't place that last seven. Eight, nine, pair. This is an eight, nine, pair. This is an eight, nine, pair. That's all eight, nines left. So how do these eight, nines resolve? It's, oh, it's this four here. So that's a nine, eight, nine. Eight, nine, eight. Eight. It's not a seven, by the way. That's nine and eight. That's nine and eight. That's eight and nine. That's eight and nine. Eight and nine. And a nine. Oh, this one four is resolved. And this three here, that's a one. 
Oof, okay. Second time's a charm, I guess. So thanks, Bremster. This was a great puzzle. I'm sorry I broke it the first time, but I hope this solve um, you enjoyed. And I really am enjoying the, these puzzle exchange videos. Maybe we'll we'll do another one and change it up. Let's see. I've received one from Zeta Math and I've received from from Bremster, so that would mean process of elimination. I should get one from Scott Strassall. So Scott, this is your uh, this is your call. Give me a puzzle, um, and then I guess I would give Scott a puzzle because I've given one to Bremster and I've given one to Zeta Math. All right. So me and Scott, maybe we'll exchange. Maybe we won't. Let's see. Um, tell me if you like these exchanges in the comments. And again, uh, please subscribe if you haven't. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers. Let's see if we can get there. I'm so close. I can I can feel it. Look, look at that subscriber number. Look at it. Look at it. It's almost a thousand. All right. And uh, I have a Patreon if you want to support me on a monthly basis. And there's a Discord server to join. I explained it all at the start. And other than that, I enjoyed the puzzle. I had a good time. And thanks for watching.